This is a positive video, I swear. Game development and releases have had a lot of negative sentiment recently. Quite a few titles that seemed interesting and exciting at first came out disappointing. Not to repeat the whole spiel about Star Wars Jedi Survivor, Redfall or Gollum, but it is pretty clear that AAA studios have lost their touch not only when it comes to making video games people enjoy, but also building a strong community and relationship with the players of that game. The AAA game releases have become formulaic, patch and update delivery sterile, as if we are all sitting in a board meeting, listening to corporate jargon, sugarcoating why the things are not working out. On the other side of the coin of underwhelming releases, just a discussion about game development has been on the downside. People have been riding this doomed train of gaming collapse and nostalgia, reminiscing over the golden period when the things were simpler, buy a game and enjoy a game no strings attached. All of this is not without a reason. We are witnessing stronger and stronger corporatization of video games, where psychological tactics and monetization policies are the centerpiece of development. Min-maxing customers' payments is their ARPG endgame. So how does early access relate to this, you ask? Well, this also has its issues. And I'm not talking about AAA early access, where now every other game gives you the opportunity to play the game three days early for $10 extra. No, I'm talking about development phase, which is supposed to attract early adopters and supporters of the game iterate on their feedback and eventually release a game that they know has some chance of surviving in the pool of millions. But it instead has turned into a long-running state never to be left because of how comfortable it feels. To round up this bleak section of the video and underline the negative sentiment about game development itself, I'd also like to remember video games that have been dangled in front of people for years in form of teasers, trailers and release delays for one reason or the other. But I have seen the light in all of this. Gaming industry is being pushed forward. It is the best it has ever been if you look in the right direction, indie and small studio direction. This is where game mechanics, the feel, and invention of new systems or even whole new genres happen. No battle pass or any other gacha mechanics. Buy a game and enjoy a game. One such game is of course Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game made in 6 years by a AA studio that has proven record of successful games. Three of those 6 years have been in the infamous early access, but in this case it was utilized perfectly with community building, addressing the feedback and constant updates to the game. The process was so successful in producing a high quality game that other developers called it an anomaly. It shouldn't be expected of other studios. It's too much. And it is too much. Too much character building, itemization, environment, world building, sound design, immersion. Baldur's Gate 3 hits you with a fantastic soundtrack right off the bat. It lingers in the background as you enter one of the best character creators, maybe not in terms of appearance customization, but definitely in terms of character definition. The story of the game starts even before the introductionary cinematic, when you're asked to create your guardian, whatever that may be. After the aforementioned cinematic, which sets the things in motion, you are thrown into the world of Faerun to do whatever you please, but ultimately to rid yourself of a parasite eating out your brain. Following the main story is not that easy though, as you are pulled into different adventures and conflicts between factions, almost making you feel as you're part of Game of Thrones plot. Though the game does not present itself as one of infinite possibilities and endings, as it is the case with some marketing strategies, it is flexible enough to make you believe you are the driver and the one whose actions truly impact the world. Changing the fate of the world is a challenging task, which requires powerful beings. And being powerful in Baldur's Gate is a combination of soft skills, your wisdom, charisma, deceit, and battle skills. As someone who left turn-based combat back in Heroes of Might and Magic 3, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. All the situational modifiers, advantages, disadvantages, skills and their interconnectedness with other abilities, randomizations make the combat enjoyable. The itemization is a whole separate story, which can be poorly summarized with different rarity, possibly magical, items delivered through detailed fantasy art. With low expectations and almost zero experience with CRPGs, I expected to get bored of slow combat and long dialogue scenes by third hour of the game. Little did I know.